My name is Matt Edwards, uh, proprietor of The Relief Room. I guess I am the creator, CEO, president, uh, all of those. I am Relief Room Management. The moment when I realized that I could make something out of it, I think were, were twofold. One was just a, a goof when I got the, the picture that is, if you see me on Twitter, is my avatar. It is Al Holland. The picture has him with a great beard, but it just, he's making a face that just looks like he smelled a fart. Like he's just, that's the perfect picture to hang in a bathroom. This picture right here is enough to where I can make this funny. But the real, the real launch pad, I think it was 2017 or 18, and a couple of guys, we all got together. My other buddies had already known about the relief room, and I told Mike about it, and he went, oh my goodness, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. You need to be on Twitter. You need to be on Instagram. You need to be on something. And I went, eh, this is funny enough for me and the fellas. We're good. Uh, and then I thought about it a little more and thought, well, yeah, if I go out on Twitter, maybe I can meet some of these guys and, and share this with them and show them some of the funny things that I'm doing and get their feedback. And that's where it really took off. The origin of the relief room really stems back to 2008 World Series when the Phillies won the World Series. It was on a Wednesday night. That Friday was the parade. My wife and I lived in North Jersey. We came back down to Hatboro to visit my parents and to all go to the parade. I was three years old when we won in 1980, so that didn't really count for me. So this was my first World Series and with my, with my dad to have the father-son connection. He was still so excited as well, just being a Phillies fan, but then sharing it with me. That famous picture of Brad Lidge down on his knees and, and Chooch Ruiz tackling him. And my dad cut out the newspaper and it was just a, a small picture like this. And he's like, I want to look at it every day. I just want to keep looking at this. Where do I put it? And I made a joke and said, look, the only place mom is going to let you hang this is in the head. And he's like, okay. And so my dad went in and he hung that behind the toilet in what is now the relief room. It was like, well, Brad's awful lonely in here. What else can we add? And it was like, well, the only natural one would be Tug McGraw from the 1980 World Series where he leaps off the mound and into Mike Schmidt's arms. So soon enough, my dad went and printed one of those on his printer in the house and put that one up right there next to Brad Lidge. And that's really the origin story of it, that 08 victory and just wanting to continue to celebrate that. And then it started growing into what it is now. So the top three favorite pieces in the relief room, that's really tough. It's like asking me which one of my kids is my favorite kid. Don Carmen, terrible batter. And that is now the handle for the cabinet underneath. It was Glenbo because he, like Rambo, because he, he had a rifle for an arm in right field. So they had him do a promo shoot like that, kind of like Rambo, which was pretty awesome. I love that I have a, a David Coggin nameplate from the back of his jersey. You got the Gene Garber oval photo here. Antonio Alfonseca here. His nickname is in Spanish, El Pulpo. Which, which translates to the octopus. If you look on the, the back, the inside of the door is kind of like the golden era guys. If you don't have Sparky Lyle on a bar of soap, I mean, what are, what are we even doing here, right? I work at home, which is nice. I'm in sales, so I'm on the phone, on the computer, but that schedule is fluid. I can do that at seven in the morning or seven at night, and a lot of that I can do when I need to. I take the kids to school, and then I pretty much do my relief room tweeting. I have a database that I have developed, and I keep all my information in there, and it's really like a calendar of events. Like I have all the things that have happened on October 4th in the history of the relief room, and sometimes it's just like, well, this guy played his last game. 
or you know this guy made his major league debut. I've been doing this a couple years now, so I, I think I use some of the same jokes, but I stay committed to the to the bit as much as I possibly can. My work sometimes goes off the rails a little bit. Sometimes half an hour, an hour, half a day, where I'm just doing relief room stuff. So I do a good amount of research on these guys, and and then it's fun because then I get my responses from the Phillies fans, the relief room fans, which is weird to say that the relief room, that my bathroom has fans. Part of being a fan is being with your people. What the relief room has done for that has magnified it even more because these are people that I don't know. They're they're faceless to me. When you go to a ball game and your team wins on a on a walk off or a big hit or a big play. You're, you're high-fiving the guy next to you. That shared excitement, that's really what being a fan is about. To have a, a silly bathroom, essentially, be the focal point of some of that, that, that's been a lot of fun for me because I'll, I'll write a tweet about somebody that played one game or five games. Folks will respond to me and say, oh man, I remember that guy. I remember when he pitched and I remember what I was doing then, which is magical. I mean, I have a modest following. I have less than 2,000 Twitter followers but they're all really passionate about it, just like me. And that's what makes it so neat. So even though I'm the proprietor of the relief room, I'm still just a number one fan like everybody else. So to share that with everybody, it's pretty cool. To be in Citizens Bank Park, that's what I equate to, to people's religious experience with church. Every year when I go down for opening day, to go back in for the first time, it's, it's, it's home. It's being home and being with all of your people that are pulling in the same direction. And we gripe about our guys and this guy sitting next to me might not like the pitcher that day or he might not like the cleanup hitter or we'll gripe about things, but we all still want the same thing at the end of that game. There's really nothing, nothing better. There's nothing like it in the world. The smells, the textures, the sounds, it just spans generations. My grandpa took us to games. My dad took us to games. We take our kids to games. It's generational. The whole feeling of watching a game and watching the bullpen, so like when guys are coming in. One thing that I do love is when it's a new guy. I love welcoming them to their new immortality because now they will forever hang in the greatest bathroom shrine in the world. I don't really love the relief players any more than I do the starters or the base, you know, the position players. Like, I love the Phillies. I'm rooting for all of them. They don't get their, their spot in the shrine immediately. They have to be retired first. I can't have active players in the relief room because I want to celebrate their careers. A lot of people trash the Philadelphia sport fan. I think what sets Philadelphia fans apart is the accountability. You'll see a guy that you think is dogging it, and it doesn't matter if that guy's an all-star player every year, the Philly fans are gonna boo him. If there's a guy who's not the best player, but he, you can see him busting his hump every single play, you can feel it with him. The, the, the Philly fans want that, I think. They, they need that accountability from their star athletes or just their professional athletes. And what we look at, I think, as a fan base is that guy is making that play for this team, for this city, for me. And I think once guys learn that, it's easy sailing. Then, then Philadelphia becomes the greatest place they've ever played. I think it's magical when it happens. We want it so bad as fans, and to see the players want it, that just makes it go, oh, that's my guy. That's my guy. And I think that's awesome. <laughs> The silliness of it, the passion of it that, that I have. There was one guy that follows me on Twitter that I've gotten to be just Twitter friendly with. I met him once. He tweeted out that said, I think the relief room knows more about Philly's relief pitchers than anybody knows about anything. And that one, very flattering. Two, very funny. And I love that part of it because people look to me for answers on some of this stuff. There are people that think it's, it's silly or, I mean, it is silly. It's, it's supposed to be silly. The joke is in the, yo, know, you relieve yourself and relieve pitchers, it's an easy joke to make. So when I was lucky enough to have Tyler Kepner do the New York Times story on the relief room, 
and on me. It was great because I got a whole lot of feedback from a whole lot of people that I didn't expect. MLB Network had a thing on one of their shows about it, and they were like, baseball-themed bathrooms, yay or nay, and they were like, yeah, that's, you know, that's silly. And that's fine. That didn't bother me even a little bit. The coolest thing about that, they were talking about my bathroom on MLB Network. If it's not for some people, that's okay. I don't mind that. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm doing the opposite, in fact. I think I'm celebrating people that maybe hadn't been celebrated. Of course, Brad Lidge and Mitch Williams and all the, the top guys everybody knows, but I'm, I'm doing the stuff with guys that nobody's maybe even heard of before. I don't get thousands of likes on things. I get tens of likes on things to make that joke that maybe one person laughs at, and that's cool. Great, I got one person to laugh. They love it. I love it. I'm still just a child at heart with this. I love baseball and I love baseball players and I, I geek out when I meet them. I, mean, I had Scott Ayer sign a toilet seat and he's like, I've never signed a toilet seat before. Like this is a once in a lifetime thing for me. I've never done this. Yeah, I could go up to any one of those players that played on the 08 team and be like, oh man, you won the 08 World Series. You're my idol, I love you. Well, they get that from everybody they meet that's a fan of that team. I got a different angle. I got your picture hanging in my bathroom. They get a kick out of it and can find the humor in that. That's all I need. That's all I need. And that's validating right there. And that's, that's the best part of it. It's just so much fun. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. And one Phillies fan is showing off his team, Unique's Pride, in a unique way. So when you, when you flip the switch and you open these bifold doors, I mean, I've had people go in there and, and gasp, like, oh my gosh. It's unlike any bathroom you probably have ever seen. Everybody's welcome here. Man, woman, fanatic, Brad Lidge. Matt Edwards calls it the relief room because all of the faces staring back at you inside have something in common. You relieve yourself here and it's filled with relief pitchers and it just, the jokes wrote themselves.